Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Stefan, and today we'll be starting our new Let's Play series. Today we're going to be playing the Devouring Swarm on the most difficult settings in Stellaris. And additionally, I've also thrown in Glavius' ultimate AI mod to make the AI even harder. So, just to let you see, this is our species, and uh, this is what we're playing with. Settings are quite insane, Grand Admiral, no scaling, high aggressiveness, and every AI empire is an advanced AI empire, so that means that everything is overwhelming and we are pathetic at the start of the game. Day one, we're already losing, so let's see how we can turn this around and make this a victorious situation. Let's begin. Alrighty, we have now loaded, and um, we can see our spot in the galaxy. So far, looks pretty good. We only have one and uh, two choke points to particularly defend, uh, but since we're playing with maxed out AI empires, uh, there's likely going to be empires very nearby, and so we're going to want to go ahead and rush for these choke points and secure the territory before it's too late. However, that is for later. For now, we have to rush colonies first and foremost, so we're going to start setting our science ship and uh, explore some systems. We are not surveying any systems until we know there, there's a planet in them, and since there's a planet nearly guaranteed to spawn in one of the adjacent systems, we're going to be saving time. Unless, of course, the first system we pop into has a world in it, in which case, we'd be right on track. Otherwise, since we are playing with Swarm, we do start with some unemployment. These pops are not technically unemployed, they still have a job in our society, and that is to scavenge minerals out of air and produce two minerals a month. However, they're much better put to work in a mining district where they could produce 12. However, this does not cause any stability or deviancy issues, and so if you really can't afford something, just let some unemployment happen and uh, you should be good. Uh, however, we don't want unemployment, and so instead we're going to start and build the research lab once we can. To help out with that, we're going to get the one mineral node in our beginner system and uh, hold up after that. As far as our tech goes, of course, let's go for some energy, mining, and some unity. For society, we could also go alternatively for biodiversity studies, which would increase our science production by 20% from our uh, researcher jobs. However, we're going to get a nice edict for plus 10% pop growth from our planetary unification, and so we'll be getting for that first and foremost. Alrighty, we have found our first arctic world. Perfect. Let's survey the system and uh, start saving up some resources to build a colony ship. In fact, I hope to be building a couple more colony ships as the game progresses. And by the end of the video, we should ideally have at least three colonies starting to get developed. Alright, looks like this planet is a decent size 17 and is going to provide us some mining districts. That is quite nice because uh, we are going to be going for some research. Uh, research is going to mean that we're going to be using a lot of minerals, and uh, so getting a lot of mining districts up and running is very important as a research swarm, because, well, otherwise you're going to go into negatives in mineral research, and uh, won't be too good. Uh, we've also found another world, size 13 continental. Unfortunately, we now know his habitability, somehow. Okay. Looks like... Uh, game's a little unfinished, however, this is still significantly better than what it was in 2.2 when it first came out, so we take those. We also are going to start building our first colony ship, and uh, start building an outpost in the system to send it over to. Of course, as our first tradition, we're going to go for expansion, and uh, that is to increase our ability to increase our growth. We're going to get a plus 10% growth tradition from that tree as well as extra pops from our colonies. And, uh, well, that tradition is only really useful in the early game, and uh, so we can make great use of it right now. Ooh, we have the first league available to us. Uh, the first league is one of the two most valuable precursors, uh, on par with the Cyberx, because it gives you an EQ Monopolis, which you can use to its full potential. The Cyberx give you a Ruined Ring World, and uh, unlike the Yuki Monopolis, you actually have to restore it, and so this is arguably even better for us in the mid game than the late game. Alright, let's build another science ship and uh, start surveying some of these systems. 
Uh, we do have the size 13 continental world over here, but it does seem that we have a size 22 arctic with 80% habitability. All right, that's quite fine. Let's survey that system and uh, just leapfrog over there. Uh, it doesn't really matter what these systems have. Uh, we have plenty of influence and we're producing plenty because we are hive mind and a devouring swarm with minus 50% starbase influence cost. Uh, this is also going to be further decreased by a meonic synapsis, which is going to give us minus 60% in total uh, influence reduction. And so every single outpost is going to be dirt cheap. Once we do have enough... Ooh. Well, never mind what I was just going to say. Let's take a look at these ruined worlds. The ISS Dimakrov crew has reported the presence of decaying orbital stations and multiple tomb worlds in the Neshmet system. Whatever interstellar nation once inhibited the Neshmet system appears to have collapsed into ruin a long time ago. The silent colony is a junkyard of a planet covered with the irradiated, rustled remains of demolished buildings, infrastructure, and vehicles. No higher forms of life are recognizable. We might gain more insight into this lost civilization by surveying any similar planets in this and neighboring systems. We have found the Ketlings. Uh, what this means is that right in the mid game, uh, they're going to have a movement of rebirth and uh, they're going to come back. And uh, this is going to form a nice little empire within our empire and is going to cause all sorts of issues. Now I don't know what happens if you go ahead and straight up terraform these worlds, um, but that's exactly what we'll try. Uh, because I really don't want a bunch of Ketlings in the middle of my empire as I'm playing on the highest difficulties in game. Oh god, we have encountered Xenos. That's great. Well, good thing they're just uh, the peaceful sort of, you know. These are just going to be the local neighborhood traders, it seems, considering how they're green. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we don't encounter any actual Xenos yet. Because, well, I don't really want to deal with that at this point in the game. It'd be uh, quite a ruin if they try to come at us. So let's just uh, survey the system. It seems like a very nice choke point for our little cluster of stars. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we can get the construction ship in time in order to actually claim the system. In fact, let's just build another one, and uh, that's going to be alright. As far as the new edicts that we got, we can now go for a drone campaign, and uh, it's relatively cheap, only 5,000 food. So let's buy some food and enact extra drones. Now this is well worth it, so we can spend some of our alloys in order to increase our production. As expected, these are the merchants, the Mutagan merchants. We'll be able to take them out later, uh, but it does require like 20k fleet power, and uh, we'll only have that by the end of the mid game, so we must not concern ourselves with those guys. This does not seem good. Indeed, it is not. We have Xena Scum, and we're gonna have to try to block them off before they come and take the system. Uh, I did not want to encounter this early, and uh, this is potentially dangerous, because if they're very close nearby, they may just declare war uh, since we're neighbors, and uh, they only have three systems to take, and so uh, that could be over real quick, and that could be very bad. Ooh, megastructure. Alright, we met some erudite explorers. Xenophile materialist. Doesn't matter. You're just a different taste of. God damn it. Looks like that was a construction ship rather than a science ship, and uh, we done did fucked up. So, as quickly as possible, we're gonna have to take Sabic and deal with reduced potential territory. That system does look quite good, and uh, I would have loved to be able to take it, but guess not. I'll survey another one and uh, live with it. Hopefully that doesn't happen at our other fort. Okay. We have a wormhole over there. I do not want a wormhole in our territory. So let's instead go to Skull as far as our choke points goes. Uh, the thing is, a wormhole pretty much is going to provide an additional front for us to face. 
and I really would rather not deal with an additional fret at this point in the game, or really any other point in the game. I'd like to keep our choke points to two, and keep it until uh, we start conquering stuff, uh, at which point we would actually expand our choke points, expand our borders, but at that point we should be superior to everyone, and uh, we'll be pretty safe doing so. At this point we might as well go for some map the stars, we have plenty of influence to secure both of these choke points, and afterwards uh, the influence is going to be used to claim certain systems with our territory that are proved to be valuable to our cause. Oh no. Okay, so we just found some Xenos over here. I was afraid there was another empire right here. Uh, which wouldn't make any sense because as an advanced AI start they would have to have a decent chunk of space. But still, it's always scary when you meet Xenos and they're automatically overwhelming in fleet and economy. We're going to catch up to them in terms of technology soon enough, but up to that point, it's going to be quite the struggle. Ooh, another arctic world. Perfect. Let's survey that system and uh, make a colony in there. And afterwards, we're going to be able to just start going ahead and uh, actually surveying all these other systems and it's going to be quite fine, especially if we can get some resources in those territories. Alright, we have our first ascension perk, and so let's go ahead and get some technological ascendancy going. It's going to help us a little bit because, uh, well, there's really no varying degrees of pathetic. You're either pathetic or you're not in terms of technology, but it will get us a couple more endgame repeatables by the time we start going to war. So I'm completely fine with that. Ooh, exotic gases. How cool. All this is gonna mean is uh, less gas refineries in the future. Nice. Alrighty, and now with the colonization of the last little planet within our home cluster that is actually habitable to us at this point in the game, I'll call it an episode. So far, we're doing quite well. Our economy is not doing particularly well, we're in the negative for energy and food. However, this can be easily remedied by a simple district for each of them. And indeed, that's what we'll be doing in the next episode. Managing some of our economy and uh, building up some systems in order to get resources such as energy, minerals, and research. And uh, speaking of research, we now have 178 by year 2215, so that's quite nice, and indeed we're going to start expanding it even further. Hive mines do have an aspect to them that makes them uh, very good in terms of producing research. Uh, hive mines have a lot of pops, this helps to get a lot of building slots for research labs, and they also don't have to deal with consumer goods, which means that we don't have to build any civilian industries on our planet, and instead we can just focus on research, mineral production, and uh, possibly some alloy production later on. Although for now, we don't need it quite yet. We might need some to be able to really rapidly build up these stations and uh, defenses on these stations in order to repel evil Xenos attacks. But those will come in the future as this empire grows and uh, starts neighboring us. And whatever empires in this region and uh, through the wormhole, uh, they're also gonna come at us and uh, attack Skoll. Uh, we do have a world in Skoll, which we're gonna be able to terraform later, and uh, convert into a fortress world, so that's going to be quite nice. And as far as this world goes in our very close vicinity, uh, once I get enough food, I may even just go ahead and colonize it, just for the sake of extra agriculture and uh, maybe some energy. Uh, playing as hive mines, colonizing low habitability worlds is not that bad because you only have to deal with increased food upkeep uh, for pops, and amenities for hive mines are relatively simple, just build a bunch of maintenance depots and uh, you should be good to go. But anyways, that was it for today, hopefully we can continue building up this empire, and indeed, I will certainly attempt to. The next video of this series will come out in a couple of days, so leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe if you don't want to miss the next one. And of course, I'll see you guys there. Bye bye.